Hello, I'm Doug, stand-up physicist, although clearly I'm sitting down. This is part of a series I'm doing of replies to Math is the Beautiful, uh, Pavel Grunfeld, who describes tensors, which are a very, very excellent tool for doing mathematical physics. But I think there's a better one. And I call them space-time numbers, which is really a technical variation on quaternions. And the differences, I think, are subtle. And so that's why, as I go through his series on tensors, I'm going to do my own thing using these space-time numbers to tell you where I see them ever so slightly, subtly, uh, and beautifully different from uh, ten the, the more standard approach uh, using tensors. Okay, so uh, Grunfeld starts with the Greek stuff, the geometry, the universal shapes of our universe, eternally true, like the triangle. Let's analyze this. Let's work with it. And in fact, he shows this wonderful little uh, geometric proof of saying, if I, could I find a particular point where the distances to that point is a minimum? And he's able to do it with pure geometry. Pure, just draw the shape and figure it out. Greeks were very much into that sort of thing. And then he talks about algebra, which is let's make everything super abstract but then let's just try and find zeros and things like that, and we'll be able to figure out things using these abstract symbols for problems. And then finally, of course, there's the study of change, otherwise known as calculus. So where you d define some derivative in a way, and by looking at these derivatives, you can figure out minimums and maximums, extremums out there. And tensors work with all of these things. And I would argue that space-time numbers also do. But, but where might they be different? And I think where they're different is where the calculus happens. Okay? So with tensors, you start with a manifold like this. And what we're going to come to is we're going to say, oh, for every point on that manifold, we're going to find a tangent space, a nice flat thing, okay? And we're going to associate a tangent space with every point in that manifold. And then we're going to go along some kind of path, and there'll be another tangent space. And we're eventually <laughs> going to figure out how to deal with, with these things and do calculus and do all kinds of uh, amazing sorts of things. So with space-time numbers, our, my big beef is with the Greeks, the long dead. Uh, and you might say it has all to do with death, with blackness, okay? Because that's how you, that should be the starting canvas. It's got nothing. Like my own life. <laughs> the start of my life, the end of my life. And you wait for something. Right? You wait for a manifold of events, and oh, there it is! That was kind of cool. All right, but it went away. That's a bummer. I can't do calculus with just one collection of events. I have to find out that, oh, when I look back at it a moment later, it was it, there's something different. And a moment later, something different. And a moment later, something different. And that's when you get to do calculus, by looking at the whole manifold of events. It's not about the surface, it's about the substance. And in a temporary kind of universe where usually there's nothing. So that's the subtle way I think space-time numbers are going to be different from tensors. Tensors are going to work on the surface of the manifold and I'm going to say, well, no, it's, it's, a, it's all movies. Get used to it. It's all analytic animations. And that's not something they teach you in school these days. 
Uh, but it's something that I dream about uh, for the future of mathematical physics. Thank you very much.